Hi everyone and thank you for watching this video. Uh, I'm jumping in early to do a quick pre-intro on this uh, just because having watched some of the chunks out of it I'm editing it at the moment in front of me uh, I can see obviously I'm very 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 glum in this. A uh, few things going on here at the moment my partner's not well so uh, lots going on in the background of uh, my mind so uh, please excuse that also please excuse I didn't notice that the uh, camera I was using suffered a few focus issues at the time um, and also the fact that I was getting very wound up with this uh, setup not behaving as it should now uh, as you go through the video I'm sure there's some of you that use this kit that are going to go oh why didn't you do this why didn't you do it that way um, please tell me if I'm doing something majorly wrong with this kit um, because to sum it up in a very short sentence um, this is basically Cisco's attempt at beating Unify and the TLDR is try again. So uh, please watch the video. Uh, please feel free to comment, um, like, dislike, um, always appreciate a subscribe. And uh, I promise I'll do better next time. But uh, yeah, uh, catch you soon. Hello and welcome everyone to another video. I'm Jim. And what we are going to be covering today, as the title of the video will suggest, is the uh, Cisco CBW150AX, which is Cisco's business wireless um, access point that they are targeting directly at the Ubiquiti Unify market. This is their new, effectively entry-level managed wireless solution um, alongside the other Cisco business range. Uh, they are obviously aware that they've been losing market segment to the Unify range, so have come out, I say, fighting with uh, this product, which I have here. This is it, the CBW150AX-E. Now, this isn't sponsored, this is just me, I purchased this myself. Um, you can pick these up off of Amazon here in the UK. They are currently uh, £134.62 in the UK from Amazon. Uh, I'll include affiliate link for that down below. So if you are interested in having a look, always appreciate people clicking on that. But uh, yes, this is their attempted uh, clawback of the market segment that they were losing out to, which is the small business and even into the small medium business, small medium enterprise market, to which obviously Unify have been very, very happy to to tear apart uh, with disruptive pricing now obviously this is going to be an interesting one i've not used anything from this range um, all i have done just so you have a heads up is uh, set up the cisco business dashboard controller which currently you either have to install on a uh, hyper-v client so you have to run as hyper-v virtual machine a esxi virtual machine or you can install it on a ubuntu uh, thing or a believe it runs on a version of focal so again this is um, going to be an interesting one because this is being touted as Cisco's sort of fight back um, there are a few things that I've already picked up on with this that I'll highlight as we go through but it's going to be interesting it's going to be nice to see and it's going to be nice to have an alternative um, so long as the uh, the few caveats that I found can either be addressed or Cisco make it actually value for money. That will be the thing. So let's get this unboxed. Pretty basic box. Not much else going on. Let's pop the lid on it. Let's see what we get. So quick start guide, instructions, normal stuff. Access point. Now, having not seen any of this product line before, I can't give a comparison, but I can give you a comparison against the Ubiquiti product line. And there's a fair bit of weight there. So we'll get that out of the wrapper in a minute. Just put it on side. Roof mount, wall mount, ceiling mount screws etc again put that to one side 
small box of more screws, bag of screws, and underneath, out of the way, we have POE injector, a network cable, and a power lead. Now, let's just have a quick look at this. This is a 15 watt, 48 volt POE injector. This, however, focus in on it. Let's see if I can. Go. This is passive. This is not a, an 802.3 AF injector or AT injector. That's just a passive injector. So just be aware of that. Don't go plugging anything into this that uh, doesn't like passive power. It actually says on the base, only connect to AP. And this is only compatible with this AP. So according to Cisco, this is a POE injector for this AP. Now, let's pop the packaging open. And yes. Plastic. Please visit cisco.com to download the latest firmware available before you do so. Okay, that's fine. So we've got uh, RJ45 on the back. We've got a port with a rubber bung in it. Let's have a look at what the rubber uh, behind the rubber bung is. Is that a USB port? No, there is some sort of probably, probably a serial console port, but it's again, possibly undefined a hole in the side got kensington lock at the top and we have got uh, input rating yeah, 802.3 af 37 to 57 volts dc cisco systems model blah 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 so that is the ap size comparison this is an AC, is a Nano HD, but it's the same physical size as a light. So you can see, for comparison, it's the same size. Obviously this being a Nano HD, there's a bit more weight to that because it's metal based. And from memory, the lights are metal based as well for the Wi-Fi 6. So there's a fair bit more weight in the Unify APs than this. So we'll see. Um, I am going to power this up uh, off of a network cable itself and we will go from there. Now I was hoping to have done the next part of the video as a first look because it would have been my first look, probably some of your first looks, at the Cisco Business Dashboard. Unfortunately that didn't happen. Um, I spent 20 minutes, half an hour, just trying to get my first Cisco AP is here, adopted into the dashboard, uh, trying to work out why something that should have just been plug, play, adopt, and go wasn't working. Uh, it was telling me the firmware was out of date, but it wouldn't let me update the firmware. Uh, it was then coming up with using and password errors, but when you put in the default Cisco password, it wasn't working. It's still saying it was wrong. So what I found in the end was uh, I had to actually go and manually configure the AP. So uh, if you are starting out with this, uh, one of the first things you have to do to a centrally managed system is configure the devices individually before you can then centrally manage them. Uh, there's no quick and easy way around that. So let's do it again. So let me pop back over to here. And as you can see, here's my uh, Cisco business dashboard. Um, we'll log into that in a minute. If you are using a router or whatever to uh, assign IP addresses, what you will notice is that your uh, Cisco AP will be assigned two addresses. One of them will be labeled Cisco wireless access point. The other one will not. So one of them, for example, here has a IP address on my network at 10.0.20.79, but there's nothing there. 
But if I go to 10.0.20.99, I get the access point. Uh, this I'll show you more of in a minute. So what we have to then do is go in here, fill in the details, create an admin, and we'll create a password. Password. And then it asks for a name, so we'll call this one AP1. Uh, location, mesh, static IP, etc. Next, wireless network name. So we're going to give this a network name network and a simple password because we're not going to be using this network. And now I can configure the AP and that will go off. Configure the AP, take, I don't know, another two or three minutes while it configures the AP. Wait and see. There we go. Um, so the primary AP has been fully configured and will restart in five minutes. After the primary AP has restarted, it's accessible from the network by going to this. Now, I'm not sure if this is part of Cisco's small business network uh, because what it appears to do is create almost like a standalone controller that then has the APs off the back of it that runs within their network. I'd need more of these APs to test. I've had a look, we can purchase some switches. I might get hold of a switch depending on uh, if I can foresee us using this equipment or not. But basically I now have to wait five minutes because I can't do anything more. I can physically unplug the AP and reboot it, but I don't want to do that because I can't bypass. There's no advanced setup option here. This is again for a small business solution. Um, there's this is one of the first frustrations that I've come across, um, and there will be more. Bizarre. Ten minutes later, finally rebooted an AP. So we'll log back in. Let's log in with our nice new username and password. Helps if I can spell it correctly. Obviously I can't. One of them, there we go. In we go. So for those who haven't seen this yet, this is the standalone settings for this access point. It's pretty much like every other standalone access point out there in that you can set up wireless LANs. So we've got our wireless LAN there. Interestingly, we've got uh, multiple APs, which I would guess is for if you are meshing um, I've not had the chance to play with that yet. I don't really intend to. So uh, there is a mesh option. So you can add mesh extenders to the system. The same as every other access point manufacturer out there, including Unify. You can mesh Unify APs, no problem whatsoever. There's no restriction to that. Um, so we can turn that on and off. Uh, we've got access. So uh, we've just normal stuff there admin accounts um, interestingly a lot of the stuff that would kind of be I'd expect to see so there's no setting in here for the IP as far as I can see management there no so what you do have is tucked away up here is expert view so first things first why can't we have an expert mode on setup advanced so we can see a bit of optimization we've got some security settings enables logins etc but in all honesty much of a muchness it's a wireless access point it's got the settings you'd normally expect to find in a wireless access point but that's not why i'm looking at this i'm looking at this because i want to know what it's like from a central management point i don't want to deal with um multiple management consoles and i don't want an access point controlling a network so you interestingly with here you can see obviously that you've got the ip address of the access point 
but not the IP address. It does not match the IP address that I'm controlling it on. So one device is already using two IPs. Um, not ideal. Uh, and then obviously, if I'm running this with a controller, that's three IPs currently. So anyway, let's switch over to the network controller, shall we? So Cisco Business Dashboard. And this is my second attempt at setting this up because the first time I set this up, it was a nightmare. It took me absolutely ages. I went round and round in circles because I hadn't manually configured the AP first. So if I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 of these, have I got to set these all up manually now? Have I got to set up every single one manually before I can manage it? Who knows? <sighs> Fun. Right. Let's log into here. And what we will see straight away is the dashboard. So we've got our network infrastructure. We've got others. We've got APs. Obviously, I've got no switches and no routers currently plugged in. Um, so we can see that we've got a few bits of statistics gathering. We've got some device health alerts for the AP, for others, and for all. So we've got warnings. The AP supposedly is happy. Um, if we go up, we've got in the top right, we've got what looks like, and if I click it, language, it does. Uh, we've got uh, notifications, so we can see here that it's picked up AP1, device is online, the device is reachable, and the username and password are required to actually manage it. So uh, we've got scheduled jobs, as you can see, I've had some fun with this one. And if we go here, uh, we have a support, or well, not even a support, it's feedback. Um, yeah, I'll fill this in later, Cisco, and it ain't going to be pretty. Um, and then we've got about, which gives us our about settings. In the top left, we have Cisco Business Dashboard. By clicking that, takes us back to the main dashboard. If we click the little option menu, we get dashboard, we get network. Now, from what I can gather, these are your effectively sites. These are your networks. We can see here that the probe, this is our loopback address at the moment. Uh, we've got the status of our network and we can see here that we've actually got two devices listed. We've got what appears to be the central management aspect here and we've got the actual access point here. So again, not the uh, most straightforward setup and we can see here for action so we can disconnect the network from the controller we can remove it uh, we can if it's a probe which is obviously how this uh, system manages remote sites you have a probe on the site or an agent on the site if the device is reporting in you can upgrade that and we have show tech uh, which again gathers diagnostic information and then emails that to cisco uh, settings we can go into and it will give us information about this site uh, which to be honest for what we're doing now not going to play with we can then go to inventory which lists the AP now if I select this AP as it stands I can't do anything I can't update the firmware I can't delete it I can't delete an AP while it's online in this dashboard the, the AP has to be offline under actions again nothing there um, if you plug in a new AP and the firmware is out there you will get the option that says upgrade firmware to latest it doesn't work all it does is pop up with a box that says you can now download these files but that's it it won't actually upgrade the AP you have to go in to the menu have to go into administration and you have to edit the device credentials and when you go into device credentials, you will see device needed devices needing credentials. So what we will do is we will go in and we will click here and we will put in the device credentials that we just set up. And what a surprise. Try that again. There we go. Second time. 
I'm lucky. So we have now authorized that device. Now, we don't need the community credentials at the moment. But you can see here that we now have that saved. And when we go back to our inventory, you'll see that the AP has decided to be offline for a bit. So it's pulling all the details in from there. We have an alert. Go back to the overview. So there is a configuration missing. Of course there is because this has a standalone configuration on it and not the network configuration. So we will acknowledge all of those. And now what we can do is close down out of that. We need to go into the AP itself. Uh, we need to have a look at uh, the configuration, which is tucked away under network configuration. And then we want to look at wireless radios, I think. Wireless, one of the two, wireless LANs. And in wireless LANs, you will see here is wireless network that's currently running on there and currently we have no other one. So what we can do is highlight that, delete it. And now that gets rid of the pre-programmed wireless network. Come down here. You will see there's network at the moment. I'll wait for it to provision, which may or may not happen depending on time. See in the job list, we've got a prepared change. And we can see some alerts, fine. Wait for that change to succeeded. And then what we should see is hopefully that network disappear. While we're waiting for that network to disappear, actually, what we can do is go back into wireless lands and we can add a new wireless LAN. And we'll call this new network. And we'll add in our default organization because that's what we've got. And we will add a new SSID. And this SSID is going to be called Cisco. And VLAN of one, because that's the VLAN. And we'll stick it in WPA2 and give it a password. And we can see, again, we could either broadcast it on 5 gig for 2.4. Get some information going on there. And if we save that, what we'll see is, interestingly, we have a job warning. What's the warning? Can I have details, please? Warning. Security type of WLAN is not supported. OK. Interesting warning. Let's go back to wireless LANs. Ah, a network has disappeared. OK, so expand that now. Don't give me anything. There we go. Let's go back in and edit that. Oh, I see, because it's a WPA and W. So if we change that just to personal, that was my mistake. Be aware then if you need WPA, not supported appears on this. Probably the same should you have to use WEP. Not that you should be anymore, but I have come across it for specific use cases. So what we can do now, let's acknowledge all those, get them out of the way. Go back to the dashboard and what we should see is hopefully everything being normal. It is. So we've got normal AP, normal all normal. And if we now go back down to here, what we should see is Cisco. So we now have the wireless network broadcasting on that AP. 
and if you need to add more you can now that's as far as i'm going to take this um because to be honest that's all that's needed to really be done there are a lot of options within this system um network plug and play again looks to be an interesting one but again it's having the right devices that support it you have to pre-provision um there is as it seems at the moment some very interesting caveats with the software um this i believe is cisco's first attempt at uh, competing with unify on this level obviously uh, there is the meraki product range which is very easy very plug and play but again this is cisco trying to stamp their influence on the small business um i would say it's also them trying to make this product or make this product range usable to people but for them to have to almost pull someone in to do the configuration and the deployment if you want to use the central management the caveats around that so far are you can use the cisco business dashboard for 25 devices for free above that and you have to start paying now you can either license individually or you can license in bulk uh, i've looked at pricing on that and what i'll do is include that somewhere probably Now, this is Cisco's first attempt at this sort of thing. They appear to be um, attempting to claw back some of the Unify and TP-Link Armada and similar centrally managed wireless solutions, but they're still Cisco. And what I mean by that is this AP is just, it, it's just cheap Cisco. That's the whole point. It's designed to be an entry and a hook to get your company latched into the Cisco ecosystem and how Cisco work things. It takes five minutes to boot. It takes five minutes to make changes sometimes. I mean, really, in this day and age, um, the last APs that I had that were that bad were probably Dratex, but I mean, it's not needed. Why does it take 10 minutes to boot an AP? If I'm having to reboot an AP, I want it to be up within a few minutes. Got to say, don't get that problem with Ubiquity hardware. So the other caveats around that is the Cisco Business Dashboard is a licensed product. You get 25 free licenses. But if you're looking at rolling this out as a business, you'll max that out in a site or two. I mean, this for us, we would have to be looking at licensing, uh, well, nine on a thousand devices, if not more, um, depending on, on what we would be looking to swap, what network we'd be looking to swap onto this sort of technology. Um, and as it stands, you get 25 devices for free. Above that, it's either you pay per device or you have to pay in bulk for bulk licensing. Uh, I've had a look at the pricing for that. Uh, a 50 pack of licenses for a year is about 700 pounds. Um, a single license for a year is about 25 pounds a device. So give or take, what I'll do, I'll put a bit more accurate pricing up here. So yes, it's sort of an entry level, let's try and compete with Unify, but we're still Cisco at the end of the day. It's not as friendly to use as Unify. It's not as simple, no. Which will please some people. Some people will be happy that there's a, a layer of complexity to it that allows them to configure a few more things. But at the end of the day, you don't need that. That's the beauty of Unify. It's not needed. That's the advantage. So while certain aspects of it are, yes, you can get phone support with it. I would expect once this actually does gain a bit of traction, because it will, because it's Cisco, 
uh, that their phone lines will be jammed full of the people going, oh, I've tried to configure it, um, but it's not working. How do I configure this? How do I configure that? Why isn't this working? It took me two attempts just to get the AP to pull up in the dashboard properly. And even then, it doesn't display itself simply. It doesn't give you very, very quick and easy to use. You have to go digging. Um, it's that aspect of it. It's very, very miraculous in how it's displaying this. It's almost as if Cisco have taken the Meraki hosted controller and tried to simplify it a bit. It still contains very much Meraki style layout and Cisco style layout whilst trying at the same time to be a cheaper alternative or an entry level it's the it's their hook to get a business into cisco um so while the product is cheap which is good i mean it's, it's there's, there's no doubting it's not a bad product but it's not a simple product compared to the likes of pp link armada unify even netgear so it is what it is at the end of the day i'm not i haven't got anything to do any performance testing with it because performance testing wireless generally if it says it's going to do the performance it does it will especially with wi-fi 6 there will be a lot of people trying to sell these based on the fact that it says cisco on the box here's some marketing bump that says oh it supports all of this and all the other competitors don't do it properly or do it right but at the same time, there's a reason why most other competitors are sold out for their kit at the moment. And uh, that's it. I'm going to keep hold of this AP. I'm going to try and get hold of a uh, switch to see what the networking aspect of their business dashboard is like. So I will be revisiting this. Um, it's a bit late here um, when I'm recording this video. And... I've just been a bit disheartened with it. It's not been a nice, simple, easy to use product. In the time it's taken me just to get the management booted up, I could have built, installed, configured a Unify controller, adopted all the ports, built the networks. And that's just in the time it takes for this to practically boot. So not a bad product, not a brilliant product. I'm going to take some maturing I suppose is the way to look at it um, going to take a bit of getting used to maybe if you're going to use it but um, yeah getting there getting there Cisco if you want to take the crown off for the uh, entry level unify uh, the entry level Wi-Fi crown back from ubiquity and I need to try harder if this has been useful to you if you've enjoyed it, if you've got any comments, if you want to berate me for I'm doing something wrong, please comment down below. I've got no problem with that. It's nice to hear from people. It's nice to have comments. And uh, please like, share, subscribe, click the bell, all the normal stuff that you do. Um, and you'll find me in all the normal places on social media. So we always appreciate follows, comments, discussions. Always happy to have a good discussion if you see me doing something stupid. <laughs> which I do a lot um, and then we'll uh, we'll go on from there so thank you for watching again and I will see you in the next one